Uh, if you've tuned in at round about this time and you haven't um, been with us all afternoon, you'll know that you should have been seeing 5,000 metre races round about this time, but they've decided to have semi-finals and a final which will take place, well, the semi-finals will take place tomorrow, so there are no actual heats at this stage. But if you like 5,000 metres running, we're going to show you that final from Helsinki now, and there was a tremendous victory for the British Isles, I suppose, but for Ireland. The World Championship 5,000 metre final, 12 and a half laps of the track. The leader is Krok Maljuk, the big Soviet athlete, and the Soviet Union with three finalists in this World Championship. No other nation has more than one. And Krok Maljuk has gone off very quickly. He was fourth in the uh, Spartakiada, which was won, by the way, by his uh, teammate today, Dmitriev. 12 laps from this point, but uh, Rockmalyuk's had enough now, he's just getting out of trouble. Followed by Dimitriev, his teammate. Then uh, Bolto of Ethiopia, third fastest man at uh, this distance of all time. Only David Moorcroft and Henry Rono have run faster than Bolto. Fourth at the moment is Marcus Rifle, fifth place Kip Koech, and in sixth place, uh, Dr. Thomas Fessinghager, the European champion, from West Germany. He's followed by Abramov of the Soviet Union, Antibo of Italy. First lap completed, the time 65. Krok Maljuk now beginning to push it on in front. It's a fairly slow pace, really. So the two Soviet athletes lead. Volto in second place. A rifle is third. Fourth is Vesigaga. Five of Bramov. Six Antibo. Seven Eamon Cochran. Eight Milanig. Nine Julian Gota. Ten Vaino. Eleven Shildar. Twelve Leto. And right at the back, Padilla. Now in the pole vault. A world record attempt by Bubka of the Soviet Union. Third and final attempt. His consolation, the gold medal. The world champion in the vault. 19 year old Russian has done the job today. A really dramatic atmosphere in the stadium as they approach the completion of two laps. The athletes strung out almost in single file, and there's about uh, 20 in first. There's the commanding tactic. Eric back to go. That was a sixth lap. Don't be too far about that. Don't make the time of Marge. doesn't mean that she was off the back, and it's unfortunate at the last that he fell and tripped at the last. But the two Russians leading here, the first time the Russians have had any opportunity of running like a team because they've never, they, they've never had. Uh, more, more than one person in the final. They haven't done very well in the distance races, but here they're taking their opportunity with two almost on from the moving fourth from the back. Unfortunately, Julian seems to be struggling at the back of the field. He has had a tough season, but he did run well to get into the final. And if, if the pace is quick enough, Julian has a better chance of finishing higher up the field. But if you look right in the middle there, you'll see in sixth place, Thomas Wessinghager, and right on his shoulder is Eamon Coughlin. And they're the two that everyone fears on the last lap. But you won't see any, any, anything from either of the, those two till about two laps from the end. Wessinghager now 31. What a record he's got. He's the European champion. And in fact, he holds the German records at 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 metres. This is 54 international. In fact, Vesigarga has been uh, in California, at a ca Californian hospital for the, a few months in the last 12 months. Uh, but the West Germans select their teams very, very early in the season and let the top athletes get on with it. A policy I know the top athletes in Britain would appreciate. Well, the West Germans do it a little bit differently than us. They look just for the championships. They look for the people who can perform in the championships. And they don't get involved in the early season meetings. And they only get involved in the extravaganzas after the major games. But the Russians are doing it quite sensibly here. They're stringing the pace along, which is going to give them better chances in the later stages. And uh, right in the middle of the field there, as I said, Wessinghager. But you won't, watch, you won't see anything from him. He's a master tactician. He won't move away from the curb until two laps to go. And um, he looks to be very comfortable and very strong. Eight and a half laps to go. Krokmaliuk leading. Dmitriev is still in second place. Bolto is third. Rifle is fourth. Fifth place, Kip Koech. Vesinghaga just, just step off the track there. He's getting pushed for rumours. Julian Gota actually is crowding him very slightly. Eamon Cochran there in the green vest of Ireland. Now 30, the world indoor mile record holder. 
Uh, fourth in the Olympic Games, 5,000 in Moscow. Fourth in the Olympic uh, 1,500 in 76. And Eamon, just hidden from your view there, has had a remarkable preparation in some ways for this race. He's been concentrating on miling, and in fact, the whole season has only run one other 5,000 before he came here. I think that's because Eamon doesn't really like the 5,000 metres. He's a miler, he prefers miling. He is one of the best 5,000 metre runners in the world, and when it comes to the World Championships, this will be his best event. But he, he, I think he should possibly run one or two 5,000 metres more than he does. But having said that, he's here in the 5,000 metres. He's got every chance of winning. He's, he's sitting comfortably there. He's had two races, and neither of them were very difficult in qualifying. So Eamon's got every chance. So David Borcroft will be listening to that with interest because, uh, of course, when you first came to 5,000, and I've talked to Eamon at length as well, uh, he doesn't like it very much, you know. Well, you know, I remember hearing a lot of people say that I don't like the 5,000, and uh, in fact I do, and I think Eamon does. Maybe the thing we don't like is running heats, semis and finals, but it's interesting now that Dimitrov has made a move. Another 5,000 metre runner moved up. But can I just ask Brennan a question? Brennan, you, were, you, you moved up probably very, well, very successfully from the 1,500 right through the 5 and 10. What was the thing that, uh, that A made you move up, and what was the thing that helped you make, come to terms with the new events? Well, I mean, we've just seen the 1500 metres and the pace over the last two laps always caught me short in the 1500 metres, so this was my natural event. But having said that, the, the pace, if I was involved in a race like this, I wouldn't be happy with the pace being as slow as this. And I would be one or two others looking at it through similar sort of eyes, like Julian Gota, who hasn't got the pace on the last lap, and they would have to make a move early. And just, just as we say, like Julian moves to the front. And that's brave effort because Julian isn't in the high, his best fitness he's ever been but making positive moves, you can't do any more than that. You can't ask an athlete to do any more than that. So the pace is very slow indeed at the moment. It's on uh, something in the mid-30s, if they're kept at level pace. But now Gota has really stretched out and started to move. Coming round now with six laps to go. Gota leads, Bolto in second place. The two Africans following. Kipkoic is right there as well. Julian Gota, former national cross-country champion, in 1981, that was one of the best runs in the long history of the National Cross Country Championship because he won the title by nearly two minutes. And anyone who's uh, ever run in that race knows what an epic that was. Nobody else has ever stretched a field out so far, and it is a truly international field too that runs in that race. That was probably Julian's best performance, and he's uh, perhaps happier too across country in many ways. But he's a very good track runner, but for him it's always going to be hard because he lacks finishing space, and he's got a uh, pace and he's got to really drive himself all the way he can't afford a weight and of course this season is in no condition to do that anyway he's livened the race up a little bit Dimitri has taken over in the lead now and this is the man who we thought could do something from a long way out they're coming up with five laps to go and Dimitri is starting to stretch the pace the pace is a little quicker on the last lap 63 seconds and if Dmitriev keeps it going, he's going to hurt some of the sprinters. He may take the kick out of some of them, and that would be to his advantage and to, and to the advantage of people like Vainio and even Schildauer. Five laps to go. Dmitriev leads. Bolto in second place. Julian Gota is third. Kipkoi four. Rifle five. Abraf six. Blessing Haga seven. Schildauer eight. Melodic nine. Lato ten. Vainio Carl. Krok Maliuk. Just behind him. 13th place on Tebow 14 and Doug Padilla back at the back, the American champion. Actually, that injection of pace by Julian Gota was quite considerable because the previous lap had been 70 seconds and he dropped down to a 63. Dmitriev then took it on and it doesn't look to me quite a 63. It's just coming up to the uh, checkpoint, so we'll see. Don't think he's quite maintained the same pace. It was a 65, so it uh, is in a respectable area. At least uh, they're keeping the pace moving and not letting it drop in time. Dimitria, interesting athlete, as David Warcroft was saying during the semi-finals. Uh, beat Semko in the European Juniors some years ago, dropped out of sight. He was supposed to be a bit of a rebel, and then suddenly turned up on the international scene again. He was 11th in the European Championships and recently won the Spartakiada 5000. And so Padilla now has come from first to last. And the American uh, champion, who's been running so well on this European tour, goes in front. Set an American record for 3,000 metres in July and slow. In a fast 5,000 in Oslo as well. Uh, he won 1,000 just for it. Oh, I think we're in front of a thrall. He has 30, no, 7, 2, 9. 
Not in action, Teach Championship in Skate International Scrum for the World Championship. Early season, he finished 20th and won by, I think he was scoring uh, the Ethiopian team. Thanks. The Ben Adam Hopperson has been wild at experience, perhaps not to the ways of some of the Ethiopians in training, but they really have half killing you, Brendan. Well, they, they seem to have been having a demoralizing effect on each other, too, and they haven't been successful at all in the games until the marathon. And no, nobody in this race has done anything sufficiently to stretch the field. So they come with three laps to go, and I still feel it's going to be down to the big sprinters because if they wanted to take anything away from them, they would have done it before now. And often when you get in a group like this, your nerves, you overcome by nerves, and you have a plan before the race of stretching the field. And then because of the arena, because of the situation, and because of the people around, you kind of freeze and don't do anything about it. But it's, it's about time somebody made a move. Otherwise, I think, I feel, it'll be left to Coughlin, Padilla, and Wessinghager. Coming around now to two and a half laps to go. They're just completing another lap. That's ten laps gone. And that lap was run in 65 seconds. Volto in front. They're all looking for a breaking point now. Noticeable that it was a little bit of a box up before they uh, started their last lap, just uh, beyond this point they're coming to. But they slowed slightly, and Vessinghager was pushed by Padilla. There's a little bit of irritation developing. Dimitri Evnar is trying. This means something with the look of it. Bolto in second place, Vessinghager third, Cochrane four. In fifth place, Kip Koenig. Sixth is Nano Vaidio. Rifle dropping right back on the inside, and Padilla has realised the trouble, and so he's come very quickly from the back. Dimitriev means business, and he's now put at uh, oh, 40, 50 metres between himself and the last man. The race really on. Dimitriev for the Soviet Union, Volta, Ethiopia, Vesinaga, West Germany, Copland of Ireland, Kikoic of Kenya. That was a 60-second lap, and Dimitriev is going away. He's really spreading them, and Vesinaga realises he's got to follow the pace. And he's got a gap that's important. Copland is the chasing man. It's 10 metres as they go through into the last lap. And Dimitriev has stolen a lead that may be a winning lead. Cochrane looking back for Vessinaga, and Cochrane's closing. Closing very, very quickly. Vessinaga's a long way behind now. Now, if Cochrane doesn't panic and go too soon, he's got a real chance. It's Cochrane against Dimitriev. Baino is beginning to come through. But will Cochrane wait? Because if he does, He's the world indoor mile record holder. He's a very fast finisher. He doesn't need to go too soon. And he did check back and look inside. The attacking point will come off the bend. And he looks at Dimitriev and says, watch me go. And go he does. Eamon Cochran on his way to a major title for the first time in his life. Brilliantly run. The champion of the world. Schild our second, and who got there? Mourinho or Dimitriev? Padir is next, Messi Harder behind him, then Volto, then Milanek, then Kipkoic, Leto, Abramov, Rifle, and Thibault. And Coughlin got it all right. Well, if you think you've seen all that before, you're absolutely right. You saw it four years ago, because that was uh, Eamon winning that title in Helsinki in the inaugural uh, World Championships. And rather sad, David, that he wasn't able to defend it this time. Uh, yeah, I think he was out in... Run, but he's had all sorts of injury problems over the last few years. But it did actually, in fact, get to the point where he was almost fit enough to compete. He ran a, f a couple of good 5,000s this year. Mm -hmm. um, but that was his great day to win that title, and I know it means a lot to him, the fact that he won it then, and uh, it was a marvellous performance. It was. He was so cocky coming around that top <laughs> bend as well, but you could hardly blame him. It's he knew he had it won there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I mean, he pulled the Russian back, the Russian was tiring, and he knew he'd got it. And it, and it was just a, a reaction to the occasion to, to sort of show that sort of emotion. And uh, I don't think anyone's ever enjoyed the last 100 metres as much as he did in that race. Mm. Now, originally, there were to have been 5,000 metre heats uh, this evening. That's why we're around at this time, in fact. But now there are just semi-finals and a final, and the semi-finals will be tomorrow.